today we are here to have a technocultural interaction with Professor of Carl Hubler. Welcome sir to this talk and we have a professor from Germany as our resource person of the day. Before proceeding further, I would like to introduce you one more person, Professor Dr. Rajendra Kumar Anaya. And uh, as the part of the talk, I may extend a humble request to our professor, Director Rajendra Kumar Anayati, to introduce the resource person of the day. Thank you, sir. Kindly introduce and please proceed. It's very nice, uh, Professor uh, Dr. Sensei youngsters here. It's my proud privilege to introduce Professor Art Karl Hubler today, with whom I am associated last 12 years. He represents a university called the Technik University Chemnitz in the eastern part of Germany, one of the oldest technical universities in Germany, somewhere in 1835. They have a huge credential of research, education, training, and further development. Professor Hugler comes from a physics background. He's a physicist by profession who graduated and postgraduated from Heidelberg and Berlin, and he obtained his PhD in imaging science. After his PhD, he joined a company called uh, Brittlesman AG, one of the world's uh, largest media companies in Germany. And he worked with them several years and rose into the level of senior management, who was uh, in the decision making team. And after a long stint with uh, Brittlesman AG, in 1997, he was conferred a full professorship with the Technical University of Chemnitz. And he went to Chemnitz and redefined the conventional printing into a new level. And uh, when I met him first time in 2004, I still remember that. First time somebody was talking about the traditional printing technology into a different dimension. I heard a new term that they called printed electronics. Till then, I was not even knowing what is the connection between these two. So then I realized it's the evolution of a new branch of engineering called printed electronics. And Professor Hubler is more like a forefather in this field. And he was a founding member in the very famous Organic Electronics Association OEE in Europe. And they have undertaken n number of projects in the similar line and this is the place where I could really witness the convergence of different branches like how the traditional printing, electronics, material science, how all these are converging together and shaping up to a new level of applications. So in fact, it's my real pleasure to have Professor Hubler with us who can take us or who can guide us in how the education is happening in Germany, how the academic levels are different from here, how the selections are happening. Is there a difference between the education system in our country and their country? Probably many of these uh, simple uh, doubts what we have in our mind, I'm sure in this interaction we can easily try it. With this, let me move on to Professor Google and you can... Thanks sir, thanks a lot for providing us such a wonderful resource person for the day. And uh, before moving, proceeding further, I would like to clarify that we have two students from Oriental Society and that is a society, cultural society that talks about language development and cultural development and uh, that society in the attempt is President Sumit and uh, welcome Sumit here and uh, then Vice President of the society Sheetal welcome you here also and we, uh, we would like to open the interaction 
uh, with their questions and their curiosity that that came emerged out of their student venture and they when they came to know that we have one the profession here and uh, expert in such an expert in the physics and printed electronics they 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 were studying even sir about your earlier interview published on internet they studied it and they uh, some curiosity emerged out of that so in order to satiate that uh, we welcome you on this platform and uh, uh, i would like to uh, invite them to start the talk interaction further so please sir so i i want to ask you how would you like to describe your journey as a technocrat um technocrat is a strange term for me as um, i'm more a scientist yes so that is my self understanding and of course uh, if you are a young student um, you have no understanding what what is science what is technology if you study you don't really know what you will become later and so the journey is always uh, exploration and um, it's always a uh, mechanism of trial and error so you make a lot of uh, mistakes in your career you understand uh, things wrong you learn and uh, finally um, also a lot of uh, random events guide you to your final destination so it's um, it's uh, you could say it's the end uh, not foreseeable what what will happen so when i started uh, physics i was in the nuclear physics with my master degree far away from printing i had never known something about printing but by accident i finally <laughs> landed in, in printing and i think that's uh, also very nice experience that um, you can't plan your life normally and you have to be open for options also in, and especially in science because printed electronics nobody could imagine when I was studying so that's a sense which you launch newly and you have to be fit and able to meet new uh, challenges so sir how do you look at present day printing scenario all over the globe printing our uh, printing is um, is in a big change but it's always in a change yes um, we have uh, since thousands of years changed in media technology and uh, maybe every stage of people were feeling it's now a very big change but i think it's a continuous big change um at the moment the traditional graphic arts industry is substituted by electronic media and that will go on for sure um so uh, the advantages of electronic devices are not in doubt so there is some products now like uh, um, <coughs> wikipedia everybody is now using wikipedia and nobody is looking in a book and a, in a traditional encyclopedia to, to understand something so there are a lot of examples that that will go on um, on the other hand um, <coughs> the, the technology of printing itself means patterning in microstructures in a very efficient way that is a very useful approach and therefore we will um, see um, ongoing printing but in totally different fields we call it now functional printing so not the color uh, is patterned to create images but uh, functional materials are patterned to create circuitry solar cells whatever and that is um, of course the future of printing so printing becomes a microstructure technology maybe in 10 years our 
iPhones of that generation will be printed. So tell us about recent advancement and future forecast of printed electronics. Cost. Forecast. 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 Future forecast. forecast. For printed electronics. Um, the main issue is always uh, the market and the application. And unfortunately, up to now, there is no breakthrough application for printed electronics. But that is a, it's a very common situation for all technologies. If you look into the history of a lot of technologies, and you see it, it took a long time. For example, um, laser printing of uh, electrophotography it was invented in 1930. And it took um, yeah, nearly 30 years as it had a breakthrough. And it was invented as photo technology, and it was never successful as a photo technology at that time. But it started in the office as a copier. So, and that's a similar situation with printed electronics. Um, the engineers at the moment are very narrow minded in terms of applications. It's a typical behavior of engineers. They have traditional electronics. Now they try to substitute this traditional electronics. But what is needed is a new application which is only possible with printed electronics. And this new application has to be invented, maybe not by an engineer, but by a marketing guy or whatever. Uh, and I'm very very sure that will, will happen, uh, and then um, we have lots of printed electronics. But at the moment, um, we are waiting for this break. So the application. The application. So, so you just told us that uh, nowadays engineers are very narrow-minded. So uh, kind of, uh, would you like to tell uh, how engineers are groomed in Germany? So maybe engineers are not all narrow-minded, but um, they have to be careful. That's right. <laughs> but um, so in, in Germany, engineering is, um, is a, a subject which is, um, of course, driven by the industry. And that is uh, a special point also academic conditions, so it's different than physics, for example. Um, physics is driven by the scientists itself, but engineering is driven by a lot of external forces, by big companies um, which uh, want to improve their technology. Um, and that is on the one hand a problem, on the other hand a, a nice advantage, because um, if you have companies behind you, you have always feedback about your work and um, you have also easy goals but on the other hand you might may also misguided by commercial interests and for scientists uh, this is a big um, demand um, to manage this to, um, to polls yes. and um, I think that is important to educate young engineers to be free thinking also independent from scientists thinking out of the box and not only believing what the gurus are talking to you. So think on your own. So that's a, an important engineering task. So what according to you are the areas where India and Germany can work together? I think uh, theoretically there are a lot of um, uh, fields where these two nations and these two cultures could, uh, could uh, come together and uh, put together the strengths of both sides. Um, so, um, of course, um, for the German side, the Hutch market in India is always attractive. Um, um, for the Indian side, the technological knowledge is attractive to adapt to Indian uh, technology, so there are a lot of options. Um, but um, of course, there are also a lot of hurdles and obstacles. Um, we have to go that into the 
details how to realize this. So um, there are a lot of politicians, and if the Prime Minister and the Chancellor made uh, bright visions, but um, the problems are in the details. But there are, of course, in a lot of fields. Uh, So, sir, how do you look at the technological gap uh, uh, of these two countries, uh, India and Germany? In terms of global terms scenario? Of, um, it's a difficult question and um, uh, it's uh, difficult to, to talk about this in a diplomatic way. Um, but um, I think it's uh, all technology. All gaps in between countries finally are cultural gaps. So that is a different way how the people are used to live, to work, to interact, and, and to see that's done in this country in this way, in the other country in that way. And finally, you see the effect in the development of the country, and then there might be is a gap. And so that is a very simple explanation. So. Finally, this technology gap is, is a cultural gap. So, is any machine manufacturer added in terms of printing, sir? Any machine manufacturer in terms of printing? Uh, Ahead? They are all yeah. behind. Uh, so, uh, Machine manufacturers in the printing area, they are a little bit um, conservative altogether. And uh, unfortunately, because of this conservative behavior, they lost a lot of opportunities for the future in the past. And now most of them struggle with their financial situation because now, now it's, it's difficult for them because the printing markets are heavily saturated in, in the worldwide perspective. Of course, there are some single markets which are growing, but in general, it's a saturated business with uh, heavy competition. And so, um, that finally reduces uh, prices and the benefit uh, and the, the money you can earn. And uh, so all of this are in difficult Sir, uh, since you have been many times in India, so we are looking at you as the cultural ambassador as well of Germany to India. So, uh, where do you think, uh, based on your visits, we would like to uh, have some vision and view of the life lifestyle of Germany? Please uh, focus on that a bit. This is the second segment of the talk that is more cultural and not the technical, less technical. So we are here now in the second part. Okay, let's go down to the lifestyle in the academic environment uh, yeah. first. And there is a good sample of this interview. If I imagine how this would happen in Germany, if he yeah. would come to Germany and the same would happen in Germany. Um, normally, the students would be not happy if I would sits there, they want to speak with him alone, they don't need okay. some teacher who is guiding the things, yeah. they would do this on Directly. their own. So there is a, a big difference um, in the, let's say, hierarchies and, and uh, this level of, I don't know how to say in the right way, um, in Germany, um, a student and a professor are much more same level um, than here. And that's for, for Indian students. I have a lot of Indian students. It's still the problem as they get up. As the professor enters the, the German student, they are sitting there and drinking. If the professor comes in, and they don't care about anything. So there is a totally different self-understanding of the students and of the professors, for example. The hierarchy important man and a little bit less important man that's not, not yes. part of the society in Germany talk and have on, 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 the, uh, on the 
way to my lectures, uh, students talk to me like to a normal person. That's a big difference. Sir, uh, next to that, uh, I would like to know that, uh, you know, Germany was shattered during the Second World War, uh, but again it is a developed nation. So what are the core ethics, core values that make it different from the rest of the nation of the world? We are highly interested in that, that how could you develop yourself so fast? Uh, there are, I think, that's now a very personal opinion, but there are two things. On the one hand, this um, development of Germany was um, not origin in, in some special German concept or something, but it was only in the great politics, because Germany was on the, on the border between the communist system and the capitalist system, and in a way it was we had this wall in between with uh, really people were, were, were shut down uh, every day um, during that time. And um, uh, so in this confrontation, both sides were supporting. Also the East Germans had a better situation than other communist companies because the Russians put uh, money and whatever into East Germany to show communists good people, have a good economy. On the other hand, it happened with the German side. So German was, uh, West Germany and East Germany, both sides, were, got the benefit out of this instead of polit greater political situation. On the other hand, I think uh, a good point was on this terrible Second World War, where the Germans were, have done really unbelievable inhuman things, as my forefathers, um, uh, we learned out of this. Yes? And I think that um, for the later generations like me, we have really in our deep genetic code, we have this catastrophe included. And all of us, we don't want it. That's it never happened. So, and, uh, for example, um, this nationalism to be proud um, on the nation that I have never learned. So I was always unhappy about my nation. As if, uh, I have for, until I became 40 or something, I have never sung the, the German until because I was, was unhappy with my German self-understanding and I was always interested in French culture, in Italian culture, in Indian culture. Finds this very interesting, and German was not so important. And then still today, if two Germans meet in Mumbai, they are not so happy to meet another <laughs> German. They go away. <laughs> if two Indians meet in Kenya, they are very happy to find them, and they start to create an Indian community. Yeah. Um, so the Germans have really erased this national feeling for for a generation. That helps a lot to understand others, and I think that was also good for economy at the end, because Germans had no problem to adapt to other countries to make business finally, and they have no issues with Indian way of life or Brazilian way of life. So that was one outcome of this. So you only paved the way to the next question. You have uh, made your uh, brief visits to India, I think time and again. Uh, so uh, we see as uh, a frequent visitor to this nation. How would like to sum up your visits to India in terms of experiences of visiting a new country? And um, what what are the things that you noticed during your visits? Maybe good, maybe bad. Be frank. Well, there's a lot. I think this time is not enough to, to uh, report on my good uh, experiences. So to, to summarize, I think India is a country in transition from a very traditional, um, very old-fashioned his, history or, or old time uh, to, to modern times. And that, uh, of course, creates a lot of trouble, but also a lot of opportunities. And the people have to handle this. 
this tension which is, which is there between modern thoughts and there are a lot of Indians abroad, they have, if they are back or in exchange with them, there are ideas from Australia, from US, from Europe, and then also the very traditional Indian culture and way how to see the world. And I think um, for me it's fascinating that India is a peaceful country, a very peaceful country. If you go to South America, you are always afraid about crime and whatever. In India, I'm never afraid about that something happened, of course. Happen bad things, but in general, I'm with so much religious differences, so much social differences, it's a very peaceful culture, and that is uh, for me always again and again a, a very surprising. Three similarities in terms of Indo German cultural uh, lifestyle and three differences. Would like to mention similarities, three similarities, and three differences at Indo German level. That is now difficult. Um, similarities, um, I think um, the, the general mindset in how to, to understand a human being, um, a democratic understanding, um, all this um, is very similar, um, though there it's like at home. Um, yes, what I mentioned previously, the hierarchical system here that uh, everybody needs to be an important person, um, that is very different. And that's for a German always uh, different to adapt to the system here yeah, and vice versa. So that is a big, big uh, difference. Thank you, sir. One final question. And <laughs> we have uh, learned a lot of from you. This has been highly interactive talk. And we try to uh, know about your nation and uh, some uh, all that, uh, but uh, mention some area apart from engineering and science uh, where Indo German people can meet and uh, think of doing something apart from engineering and technology. I'm talking in terms of philosophy, culture, spirituality. Where we can, uh, can there be any possibility of uh, meeting of any point of meeting these culture? Are of these two horizons, or they are, you can say, illusionary? I think uh, India is the largest democracy in, in, in the world, and um, uh, we, we see at the moment in the world a lot of uh, movements uh, into the wrong direction from my position, and I think it's, um, um, it's a common task of democracies democracies of German, Indian, but also others to, to show that this is a, the freedom of the single person is a very high um, point in, in the life and we have to fight for this together. We have say on the common day, so. Thanks, you. Thanks, Professor. Thanks a lot for uh, sparing your time and I would like to Thank at the same time to Professor Dr. Rajan Kumar Anayat to arranging such a talk and uh, uh, providing the time to us. Uh, we are all very happy and uh, we wish you a very nice day.